Hey, it's another United and Stormwind card reveal. This one's going to take a bit of a somber tone because one, there's not that many cards to reveal. The reason for this is because there's some backlash uh, for Blizzard getting sued by California over allegations of sexual discrimination as well as harassment. Some cards, as an effect, did not get revealed. And I will stand alongside them and also not be revealing a card this particular season as a result. I originally had thought about still revealing the card and then attaching a very strong message to it where I would amplify the voices of those who spoke up against the specific things that happened at Blizzard. But they were so graphic and actually terrible that... I decided that I could not subject my audience to that, uh, especially you know when tied into a card reveal. So I've decided to just pull it instead. It's really saddening to see this happening, especially at a company that you love and have played their games for forever. Uh, I think it's really important to have more women in the gaming industry as well as just in gaming in general. And this is a setback. To be an optimist, however, the wheels of progress do move forward, and though at some times there are setbacks, uh, this has really been an opportunity to see more about the plight, I guess, and the first step towards just having the situation be better is to shine some light on it. So I look forward to the day where women in the gaming industry, in all industries, and in games in general, are all, you know, equal to men. I have no doubt it'll happen someday. And hopefully this is one of the events that pushes that forward just a little bit faster. With that said, as I am still a Hearthstone content creator, the show must go on, and the game is fun, uh, we'll reveal some cards. And believe me, it is awkward to do so, but ultimately, the show must go on. The Madman! We'll start off with a Netheron! 6 mana, 8, 6, Demon Legendary. Cost 1 if your hand is full. How do you get your hand to be full? Well, it would be something like turn 2 tap, turn 3 tap, turn 4 tap, and then play a Netheron. Uh, so it's kind of like Mountain Giant on 4, except it's 2 less health and you draw a card. In general, this is a better deal than Mountain Giant whenever you can play it for 1. And it's a demon. And on 6 mana, you have the pity reward of uh, you can just play it as an 8-6. You might think, well, without Mountain Giant and Twilight Drake, this will never see play. And you'd be right, except Dark Ollie Pact. Four mana, summon a fiend with stats equal to your hand size. So this card is very similar to Mountain Giant. Uh, if you just tap, tap, and then play it on four, if you're going first, that's just an 8-8. The main problem with this card is, supposing you top deck it pretty late, uh, it's even more useless than the Mountain Giant. Since the Mountain Giant, you can spend your 10 mana to play it as an 8-8. Dark Alley Pact, you're not going to want to spend four mana on, say, a 3-3. Uh, the second big problem is with only Dark Alley Pact and Anethron, that might not be enough to build a handlock deck. Twilight Drake was a really critical piece of handlock, just as another strong card that you could play. So you used to have four really good plays on four, now you only have three with Anethron and Dark Alley Pact. Will that be enough? Here's another druid card that looks really cool. Oracle of Loon, 3 mana 2-4. After you play a minion that costs two or less, summon a copy of it. Seems really good, because if you copy just any minion with it, that's immediate value. The main problem is, it doesn't look like there's anything blatantly overpowered you can do with this. Now, there's not that many minions that cost two or less that you really want. One way to try to break the two or less rule is you can play with discounts, such as Umbral Owl or Strongman, or Celestial Alignment. Uh, however, those all sound like way too much work to actually make Orcovaloon work. Well, keep an eye out on any minions that cost two or less that may be particularly spicy, perhaps coming out this expansion. Welcome to what might be the worst card in the set. It's 
Two-Faced Investor, 3 mana 2-4, at the end of your turn, reduce the cost of a card in your hand by 1, 50% chance to increase. Now, I kind of get it. You probably didn't want to balance it in such a way where games would be decided based on if you flipped increase your card or decrease your card by 1. But 2-4? Not even a 3-4? Would anyone actually include this in their deck to risk decreasing a card that's like a combo card in your deck? Uh, when you could easily just increase it instead and be rude. I think this is the worst card of the set by far so far. And finally we have Auctioneer Jackson. Two mana, two, three. Whenever you trade, discover a card from your deck to draw instead. The main purpose I can see for this is maybe you're in a combo deck and you run a bunch of trade cards just to filter for your combo anyway. Uh, Auctioneer Jackson might be a valid play in that one where you play Jackson on a turn, like somewhat late. You trade a bunch of cards and you discover your combo. So far, I think that's very specifically in that hypothetical deck, period. Uh, and it's tough for combo decks to fit in too many just tradable cards. But we'll have to see two things. One, are there any like really specific maybe combo cards that are tradable? Maybe just a lot more good tradable cards? Two, we have to see if there's more whenever you trade effects. So those are the cards. Uh, again, it does feel very awkward to continue to put out Hearthstone content now during this period of time. However, I'm happy that a spotlight has been shown on Blizzard, perhaps to some extent the gaming industry as a whole, just as a cautionary tale that could happen to any company. And I'm sure the rest of the reveal season will also have a lot of hiccups on it. Thanks for watching, and we'll carry on.